It is March the 11th, 2023, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Hello, and welcome back. It's Chris and Adrian and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever, wherever you are, whenever you are. Um, we are the future of photography. We'll talk about photo-related stuff, broadly speaking. <laughs> Generally speaking. Yeah, <laughs> Generally yeah. speaking. <laughs> Photography does come into it once in a while. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> some people might think this episode is about film noir, but it isn't. We are going to talk about websites, of all things. Who, yeah, who had that idea? <laughs> Website. Well, websites. Yeah. So, so this is a, another one of these uh, ones where uh, actually the podcast is basically just a thinly veiled cry for help. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, I I have to it. say it's it, it's got to be two years or so since Jeremiah first started gently nudging me to share my work more and to yeah maybe build a website and. I did get as far as doing a zine last year, but things might have come to a head where I'm just starting to work on my very, very first website of my photography. Cool. So I'll take all the help I can get, quite frankly. Should we, so, should, should we, should we ask the question? The first question should be, do you need a photo website? Ah, that's a good question. Um, so uh, why, why, why do you want to make a photo website? Well, I've, I've, lived this long without needing one um, so so the, there's that um do you know uh, i think it's more that perhaps a a barrier to starting has been lifted by serendipitous mm. circumstance oh i see pro- so there's, probably there's some, some explanation so you had you had some internal trigger that made you go i should put photos out in public and have people I don't know, critique them, like them, unlike them? Kind of. It's, a, it's actually an external trigger rather than internal trigger. Um, and it relates to the Sunny 16 podcast, uh, ah. where we are currently in the middle of recording a mini series of shows about photographic style. Mm. And as a part of that, I thought to myself, do you know what? There are... There are things that I look at in my photograph, in, in my collection of my photography over the last 15 years since I took it up as a hobby. And some of those things I really have moved on from. Some of them were either because the, the, the photographic style they represented is something that I was experimenting with but just didn't gel uh, or something that I really enjoyed for a while but I, I've kind of grown past it now. Uh, or or something that was just blatantly amateurish and didn't work very well. <laughs> and that's not to say that those are all the ones from a long time ago. Some of those are quite re- recent as well. So the but so what happened is I identified through my archive five or six collections of photographs that I felt represented something of a style. And it's very much an emerging thing, very much an evolving thing. And until I until last year, I couldn't have told you up from down about you know, what might or might not be my photographic style and I still don't know that I know that and I think that's kind of the point in a way isn't it it's a journey but having identified half a dozen or so sh- small collections uh, of photographs I thought to myself actually is that is that the hard work done now is, is the rest of it just drag and drop <laughs> hmm. I think most of it is really about editing isn't it but even before editing, we did really, an entire episode about that. Finding out yes. what's the what's the pictures, what, what is the collection of pictures, how do That's, they fit together? What is a folio? How does a folio of pictures? Right. Uh, go go uh, back it, to go back to one of the last episodes and listen to that again because it, it's carefully. really <laughs> yeah. Because because of course what we what we told is the truth and nothing but the truth and very deep uh, and yeah. I think the <laughs> first question in building a website is answering to yourself. Why do I need this? What is the mm-hmm. purpose of my website? Is it to sell pictures? Is it for family and friends to see what I've been up to? Is it a way of organizing my pictures in a way that is public enough to put more pressure on me to be a little more disciplined about my editing? Um, 
Is it a gallery of some kind that you invite people just to wander around and, and, and kind of take in the images, not even really that much about you, but about the images themselves? So I, I think all of these things would require a slightly different design. Uh, is it a website that is going to be fundamentally used mobile or, um, or you know, obviously on a desktop? Um, is it something that people will have total access to or are there gated elements of it so that you can put a certain amount of imagery on there but keep uh, other stuff private for your friends and family? All of these things are going to kind of uh, inform your design decision of how to do it and how many images to put up. Um, on my own website, which we'll, you know, we'll get into a little later, you know, one of the big issues is how often do I change it? Um, how, what do I keep on it? Uh, the way mm, the plumbing works on my website, I can just turn off folios, add others. And, you know, I want to give people an immersive experience, but I don't want it to be sort of endless. So I'm always trying to factor in how much or how little to put on there and how big a folio would be, etc. Um, so those are some of the questions to ask uh, that one should ask oneself before embarking on this. Also, is this something you want to code yourself and build? No sense that anymore, I don't think. There are so many uh, um, tools that enable one to throw up a website very, very simply, easily with templates that make it really attractive and easy to, to kind of move images in and out of. But um, you, I would encourage people to really research this because uh, spending a lot of time uh, with a, quote, fly-by-night, unquote, um, server that is kind of cheap and cheerful and, you know, people are going to it and there it is and then it's gone. <laughs> then what? So I think the longevity of, of and the, the, the kind of solid business model of your server, whoever you're using, is also yeah. very important. And, pe and people are not necessarily tech savvy enough to have like a whole, like, like do coding and things. So very often you will probably have to resort to. Yeah, the, the usual suspects like Squarespace or uh, Wix.com or others that give you that drag and drop experience where you can create a gallery, take stuff out. And um, there's there's like, from a technical point of view, there's a lot of things, starting with very simple things. Like uh, if you go to tfttf.com slash tfop photos, that's our little photo gallery where we just throw pictures in and that's pretty much an iCloud photos shared library. So... Um, that could be the simplest form, but then, of course, you don't have much influence on what it looks like and how it works. So Lots just to put that out there, there are so many different ways to do it. So this is not going to be an episode about... Um, or, or, or Adrian, do you want this to be an episode that tells you which tech to use? Uh, it's... Uh, no, they're, they're not, not on the face of it, I think. There, but there is a, a range of things to think through. So going back to what Jared Meyer first said uh, uh, a minute or two ago about the why of it, um, uh, I think the why that you, you did say one, one example you used there, Jeremiah, did resonate some, which was uh, about uh, in, increasing the pressure on me to, to develop more work and be more, <laughs> yeah, more thoughtful about my work. And so um, that, that is uh, pretty close to what I think is my reason for doing this. So it is, I am, I'm actively exploring ways to improve but also to uh, but also to increase the quantity of the of the photography that I do so it's great having a podcast but that's not the same as actually doing photography right so if I spend all my time making photography podcasts that eats into the time I have to actually go and do photography now that's not me that's not my resignation you don't get rid of me that easily right this uh, this is not a mic drop I'm leaving the show kind of a day right but the you know I am actively trying to create some pressure and some discipline and some you know for myself to, to to take this further and to create completed imagery completed bodies of work that would actually you know 
improve, improve, mature what I'm doing, right? Improve and mature what I'm doing. And I think part of that is if I, if I go through the exercise of having to do that selection, that edit, that layout, that thought process, and you know, it'll give me a different view into my collections of photos, which will then have a very positive feedback loop into what I make next. I, I think that's so, true. So episode 249, that's the one. The Folio Files Collection Connections. I'm still proud of that title. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's, I, think, I think that could serve uh, as, a, as a bit of a reference. I need to go listen to that one. I wasn't there for that one, was I? So that, I need to that's go why listen. Why, <laughs> that's why I keep bringing it up. you to listen. <laughs> well, it, uh, I, I need to go listen to, to my own podcast, except it was one that I wasn't <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, you so, know, that. Uh, one thing that, that I would add in terms of your process, um, try to design a workflow from capture through uploading, through editing, and then into the website uh, that is easy, that is simple, okay. uh, that is repeatable. Because if, if you're daunted by the technological uphill um, process of trying to get your images all aligned and get them up there and uh, you know your heart beats faster and I'm gonna screw this up you're not gonna you're not going to enjoy the process as much as if you have a a workflow that that shouldn't take you more than post editing let's say 20 images, shouldn't take more than 20 minutes of like active, you're up, you're on, you're there, and it's closed, you title it, and gone. And that enables a more familiar, you know, pathway. So I, I, I think in terms of what you were saying is the first thing is just figure out in your head what folios or what collections you do want to put on and arrange them in files. In folders, I mean, mm -hmm. and and go through them. And so maybe you'll have five folders of five collections with, say, 20 images in each. Um, doesn't matter how many. It could be two images in each. It, it re or, you know, I don't think you want 100, but, but, you know, 50 wouldn't be out of the question. You don't have to display all of them at one time either. That's a mm. whole other way of assessing the effectiveness of a website design template. Is it easy to move things in and out of what's visible and what's sort of in the garage waiting to be unveiled or not? So once you have that and you've chosen your template or how you're going to affect it, um, just be very conscientious of the DPI the size of the image, because that is very, very important in terms of how your website will function. So if everything is uploaded into, let's say, a relatively small four megabyte images at 300 DPI, you're, you're going to be crashing and burning uh, on, online. It's 72 is, is kind of standard, and some go up to 96, but 72 is standard. And if you just play around with, is it 5, 12, 7, 12, wh whatever the format is, make it consistent and make it fast to upload. Generally, your templates are going to assess what is best for them. So that's yeah. interesting. So fast, if you, fast to upload is an interesting one. And if you go to... If, if you go to, to any of the, let's say, yeah, again, Squarespace and so on, the, the bigger um, web page building block kind of systems, then they will typically take care of that for you. So you upload and they will do the resizing and the massaging to make sure that it loads quickly for everyone. And that, that is, I mean, Jeremiah is perfectly right here. This is one of the most important aspects of, of how people will perceive that thing. If they have to wait for every picture because they're on a slow <laughs> connection, then they'll, they'll ju just bail. They, they will not stay. People are very impatient when it comes to using websites. So uh, loading times of a few seconds maximum. Nothing. So well, we'd have to make sure that that. I mean, that's part of the technical execution side of it, isn't yes. it? So it's interesting what you say, Jeremiah, about the the uh, the the aspect ratio. Yes, you know, so be, being consistent, 
Is that is that <laughs> something that you look for in your work uh, when you publish it on a website? Uh, generally speaking, I try to keep the folios pretty well engaged in a single kind of format. Just makes the viewing experience. So a you more you, you try to keep all the photos in portrait or in uh, in landscape oh, yeah. layout. Yeah, okay. but th that would th that isn't much of a problem because uh, the folios that I'm using are all shot in a specific kind of format anyway. If I'm going out to right. do mm -hmm. kind of wide, you know, 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 landscapes, those would be in a single folio and they would be the same aspect ratio. And, you know, lately I've, I've become very... Uh, enamored going back to Rolleiflex, Hasselblad, square format days and and, and using the square format, um, A, because my affinity for AI just defaults there, but also um, I'm finding that, that when I used to um, shoot uh, fashion and, and in square format, there is a kind of a balancing that happens there that is very different compositionally than you know vertical or horizontal um and and um in, in many ways harder uh to be effective because you can't you can't just kind of default to the you know one third two third ratio for effectiveness you've got to be very very specific about how the box is going to work with an image um that's just my own and that, foil. of course, also will come down to what kind of a device is the photo going to be looked at. Well, there you um, go. That's something to think about, isn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. Because <laughs> you have to think that most people these days are going to consume this on their phones. Um, be, you know, rather, uh, mo yes. Most of the time. Obviously, you know, web platforms are responsive to these things these days. And you know, you, the, that you can make it look good on, uh, on both, as it, uh, both desktop and mobile. But is it is it correct to say, from your point of view, you two, that actually designing something, it would be yeah, it would be good to design something that works, or design with mobile first in mind as the primary well, point of consumption. From my point of view, yes, absolutely. We're looking at sixty over sixty percent of all web requests worldwide are from mobile devices these days. Okay. So the mobile devices are are in the majority so um that it still kind of depends on what target group what group you're targeting but in general i'd say um make it work on, a, on your mobile on a mobile platform first make it work on smartphones first which means um you have to you have to assume that a lot of people will come to your website with a vertical device yes. in front of them interesting yes yes yeah i'm i'm in the opposite camp of chris here Okay, um, I, but th that's that's because you know my website is really geared towards an art experience, a gallery. That's why experience. I said the target audience, right? Mm. You know what I mean? Gallerists, uh, aficionados of art, who who fully expect to look at it in the best particular environment that they can conjure. Um, I. I will post on Instagram, sometimes on Twitter, um, and those really I do take into consideration the the kind of device management of the images, and often post very different kinds of pictures on Instagram that I have on my website. My website is generally for images that I feel will be in my own kind of museum, as it were. So they're there to, to stand the test of time. They're there like to get, get a sense of who I am. They require a little bit more leaning in from the viewer. So if they are really, truly interested, they will go to the website and they will navigate there. That's that doesn't mean that they don't work on mobile. Um, they do. But my first iteration is to have a really, really gorgeous uh, big screen experience and then translate it to mobile, which most of these uh, template server uh, 
um, companies will do. I mean, they do that almost automatically. The format will be a little bit different, yeah. um, whether it's flipping or scrolling, and some allow you to kind of navigate between the two. Um, but I think, you know, what Chris is saying is, yes, I think if people just want to get a quick sense, they can go to my Instagram, flip through, and they'll see something. There are links then to the website. It functions, but if there's further interest, real interest, what I would call they would go to the web. Um, but again, it's it's about your audience. It's not about, um, again, it's why do you want to have your website? Well, that's the thing, you see, because part of me doesn't care whether anybody sees it or not, because the, <laughs> the, the, the pri- if the primary reason is doing it so that I can learn to improve my photography and, and you know, by going through the whole process end to end, of you know, uh, uh, from capture to publish, then actually it doesn't really matter who sees it. Um, having said that, of course, um, I, I am interested in that as well as a dimension of the learning because it's the p- part of the publishing is the presentation, isn't it? And so I'm very much interested in that. And, can and how can that I ask you something then, based sure. on what you just said? Um, if, if that's the case, I would, I would say your best bet is to go with your biggest, most flaw-revealing screen possible which is the web so if you really truly want to be disciplined about your own work you want to kind of present it warts and all as big as you can with a proper kind of formatting um isolated you know in white or black or whatever color you you want to frame it in and then reduce it to the kind of quick flip on the mobile yeah, no, I think, for your I think, own purposes, I'm saying. So, so I think you both make very valid points about which to design for, and I think the answer is design for it, it is is have a, a platform and a service that that serves both, right? It serves both mobile and desktop because they are very different use cases that you've described. So what yeah, one is is it acknowledges the volume and and where people are actually most likely to consume it. The other is about if people actually want to give it some more considered thought. Both of which are very valid use cases. So. So I think that so, so this is this is already really good and really useful. Can we because um, the the things that are going through my mind are sort of the, the types of website and yeah. You know, so we've talked some about images and you know and you guys have recently done a whole show about you know choosing images and making portfolios. So um, the the things that are specific to a website, um, I, I've done a li- I've tried to do a little bit of research for for this conversation. Um, it strikes me that there are several genres of photography website, personal photography website. Uh, well, personal slash small business freelance you know, kind of thing. Um, one is is seems to be a very generic. You know, there are collections of photos, and there is a navigation down the left hand side. And I think that I remember when my sister worked in an art gallery, and she said that was absolutely the standard that that, that you would expect to interact with that world. They would expect to be able to navigate very easily on a clean looking website that you know and and access collections of images Um, and I see some of that reflected in your website actually Jeremiah as well so I wonder yeah yeah, and and I wonder if that's been a conscious thing because it reflects the interaction with the art world that you were just talking about no no, it's I want the website to stay out of the way of the images okay I mean that that, that's really what what I want I don't want the website to be the the thing that is the design I want the okay. images there. So anything that gets in the way is gone. So that's the driving yeah. force around that, which, which is a great segue to call up the first website in our list here where absolutely uh, the design is very much a feature of the website itself. Uh, and uh, that is the website uh, of somebody we've talked about actually more than once on this on this podcast uh, is Jeff Bridges, uh, the Hollywood actor. Who is actor. not just an actor, he's a photographer. He is a photographer and has an amazing collection of photographs on his w- personal website, often shot behind the scenes in movies that he's made and also sh- often shot with a wide lux film camera. Now... I would challenge you, Chris, as you're navigating this on uh, on the screen recording. I would challenge you to actually find the photographs. Yeah, photography exhibits. There's the exhibits, and then there's oh no. I'll, t- I'll talk over this because it's going to take you a while because it took me a while. Now I would so I used to love this website. I've been looking at it for years um, because I love the imagery. Um, I looked at it today for the first time in quite a while, and um, I think the 
the, the aesthetic it, it looks of it. like it's mainly selling a book. So, so for those that don't know this website and have not heard of it before, um, Jeff Bridges has some fantastic imagery. Um, but what he does is he tends to handwrite his website and scan it in. And so the navigation of it is all over the place. It's all scribbles and doodles and stuff like that. Um, it used to be really easy to find the photographs on it um, of all the stuff that he'd made. You've scrolled past it a couple of times, actually, Chris. There's a list of movie names. There you go. Um, and oh, okay. Oh, this is not obvious at all. Uh, and, and so, so I, I, first of all, I just, yeah, I know both of you have seen this website before. Um, uh, what do you, what do you think of this? I, my, 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 um, my, posit- my, my impression of it today is that actually the, the, the idea behind the style of the website itself has not scaled very well with the amount of content that is now on it. <laughs> I mean, personally, I, th- I think it really reveals so much about who Jeff Bridges is um, it, as a warm, very accessible person who enjoys what he does, um, who takes us behind the scenes. But the images, and I think his images are great if you did not know that it was Jeff Bridges movie star, etc., and just had these as formal pictures that you you weren't even um, tipped of where they came from. They're just aesthetics of images that are done for their own sake. I think the impact of the images would be very different here. Here they're really about him revealing his own sense of who he is, where he comes from, what his interests are, and his personality. Um, and that I think that's very effective. Does it present the images in the best possible way? Well, as a scrapbook folio of looking through Jeff's family photos, in a way, yeah, they're, they're, they're great. Um, would you look at this as art, um, I think it pulls you away from that, even though any number of these pictures taken on their own, printed or wide, could be seen that way. So that's just my... That's really interesting. There's a couple of things you said there. So scrapbook, that's... So website, a scrapbook, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't... So And of course, of course, a website does, does have a purpose, or in this case, multiple purposes. It's not just presenting the work, it is... It's about informing people about the, f- the movies he's working on. It is buying prints. It's buying books. So there's, yeah. there's like a, whole, a, whole, a, a yeah. whole lot of different things that have different goals. I mean, mm. if you present the photos in the best possible way and make it like very, very super enormously compelling, then people might not want to go and buy the books anymore. So th- th- I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but the <gasps> goals of different goals can work against each other in some yeah uh, that's true uh, so, so i'm glad i brought that up then because i, I wasn't I, I wasn't quite sure how to talk about this particular website today because it is one i've loved so much in the past because it, it, it of the the photos but actually the idea of it as a scrapbook is a is quite a compelling idea jeremiah okay so interesting yeah um, so th- there's another one which uh, which is less about um, a personality behind it and uh, and is an example. Um, this is a fashion oriented website uh, that to me looks very much like the cover of a fashion magazine of some sort, which presumably is is on purpose because that's the audience it's for. Um, I, I I don't know what to think about that this, and I don't know quite whether I. Um, uh, yeah, what what is the conversation I want to have about it either? But I thought I'd bring it up as an example of a, of another genre. I don't think it's me, um, but you know, is it? Uh, my reaction here is if 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 I'm uh, Lislot um, and I am trying to get my folios into global fashion magazines. Well, it used, it used to be that you would take your tear sheets and your folios and you would courier them over to the fashion editors and they would look at it and 
uh, or your agent would do it and you would either get a call or you wouldn't um, about maybe doing a gig for them to start. Um, nowadays, um, if you are an editor of a fashion magazine and you were sent a link to this, I think there's no question you would look at them and if she's working in more or less the style of your magazine, um, this being a little what I would consider a more classic conservative fashion magazine or um, catalog kind of work, you'd look at it and go absolutely very confident, very um, adept. Um, I think we should have a conversation with her because they, this is they really sell her style. Yeah, this is very much presented in a way as you would find it in a fashion magazine. So yeah. um, the I think the, the target audience is very clearly defined here and uh, th it works for the target audience. Absolutely. It mm -hmm. looks okay, like so a that's, fashion that's magazine. Really interesting. I'm glad to, because, uh, I mean, I th by the way, I have um, the link in the show notes, the, the photographer is called Lisa Lotta Fleur. Um, I, I have no idea who that is. Um, it was one that I came across whilst sort of just, you know, uh, browsing for fashion photography websites just as a genre to see what they were they, they were like. Um, uh, so, yeah, interesting, very tuned to, tuned to an audience then. Yeah, also, you could 100%. see that she's working in... Um, for the most part, um, in a format that feels like a, f a page, can be seen as a page. Yes. When she works yeah. horizontally, uh, she'll put type across, which again is an indication of how a double truck so that would be a spread uh, image than a page. Would, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, with type on it, so mm -hmm. you get a sense of oh, this this it feels good with type. A ne others, negative space that we're looking at one right now that has a lot of negative space on it yeah. so that you've got plenty of room for that that could be definitely used as a spread yeah. with plenty of so text the, yeah there. this is someone who plays to the imagination of fashion editors um mm -hmm. and uh, those who you know in retail may hire someone for a advertising shoot Even specific to that though a lot of the pictures i see here on the website are in portrait format vertical mm -hmm. yeah. so um i don't know how this Actually, let, let me resize it and see how it works in a small format. Yes, it is very mobile friendly because yeah. if you uh, resize it to a small format, it will still use the space on a, on a mobile device very well. So mm. lots I of thinking went into this for sure. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's a good one. I, and, and I would, um, I had also another genre just because um, uh, I know it, uh, I'm aware it is definitely a very strong genre is that of wedding photographers now I deliberately haven't put in a link in our recording notes here uh, to any wedding photographer um, quite honestly uh, I, I really am not a fan of wedding photography <laughs> websites and so what i didn't want to do was put in a website and call it up on the screen and say to everybody here's an example of something i really don't like i didn't think that'd be fair to any working photographer uh, so um because clearly those wedding photography websites are also very well tuned towards their target audience uh, and you know can be very effective i assume they are very, very effective marketing tools for wedding photographers the fact that i personally don't like that genre of photography or photography website is, is not something that you know uh, i would want anybody to uh, to to lose any personal um credibility over credibility is the wrong word but you know what i mean i wouldn't want to be sitting here bashing somebody's website when they've worked so hard and they're probably a really really good photographer so um so is there, I, I did try to spend some time looking for an alternative wedding photography site. And there are quite a few wedding photographers that say they are alternative. They shoot in a more sort of, you know, warts and all style or a more, um, you know, documentary style perhaps or something like that. Um, almost, well, I couldn't find one where the website looked any different from a normal photography, web, uh, wedding photography website though. So um, again, I, 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 I wasn't able to find one. I mean, uh as as a wedding photographer, um, if if you if you shoot a lot of weddings, then there will probably be a service that you go to that sets this up for you, that you throw your pictures in, that has all the plumbing in place to make sure that your clients can find their select photos and, and browse them, them, select and make a book and and have the bigger prints and so there's there's a lot of like presentation and selling and everything in between. This is a, this is an entire business 
uh, proposition from the sales process through the uh, selection process, the printing process, and so on, and and the word of mouth and referrals and all that stuff is. <laughs> Sounds like we okay. should do an, e an episode thing. on wedding photography. Is it we're possibly? Oh, that, yes, that not would be. not too much experience. <laughs> I shot I shot a handful Zero. of weddings, but only for friends and family and. I never really. I think I've done one much. ever, and that was for family. And actually, I was only um, uh, they uh, they uh, they also had a uh, a professional photographer there, but only for a very very short period of time around the ceremony. So I did everything but the ceremony. Okay, um, right. So speaking of wedding photography, it's the most pressure on a photographer that you can have because. Yeah, they better this is turn not, out. Not an event you you easily <laughs> repeat because so, the photographer messed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit of fun with you two now for the for the last few minutes of the podcast because there's a question I wanted to ask you both and I didn't want to put it in the notes. Um, uh, so uh, the, my question is, what do you imagine an Adrian Stock photography website to look like? Who wants to take that one first? And feel free to be as as funny or as evil as you like. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, let me go first. Um, the first thing, well, and the, the first and only thing that comes to mind when thinking of your photography is the zine that you made. That yeah, me is too. The, that's the thing that, that stands out because it's the only time I really seen stuff that you made in a, in a, it presented in a specific form as, as a presentation. So um, that, of course, then would come closer to the Jeff Bridges kind of thing. Um, it would, wouldn't and, it? Yeah, interesting. Yes, it would. And and, and uh, the way you talked about it today and just talked about the Jeff Bridges site, maybe that's something that could work with your photography. I, I, I would you know, totally second that. Uh, you know, my instinct is um, you want it to feel carefree, hand, you know, all, warts and all, fingerprints on it. Um, that will relieve the pressure on you in terms of the formalization of your imagery. I think the presentation could be somewhat, call it chaotic, but, but um, with a path to isolate the image and to see it for what it is. But first impressions should be, I would say, like opening a box of photographs that are all kind of cluttered together and you just grab one and, and look at it <laughs> and respond. And maybe there are several boxes of them. But I think that reveals, A, the, dare I say, the emotion that drives your pictures within your family and environment. So you want to reveal that feeling that you have when you take them, when you show them, when you edit them, and now when you present them. So I, I take Chris's point uh, of the, the feeling of the zine. Now, by the way, this is not easy to do. <laughs> I want to no. say, <laughs> you know, it's going to be difficult to create a carefree environment since most templates are designed not to have that but i'm sure you can find that if you drill down but but i i think that would that would be the kind of of thing that would not surprise me about coming to hmm. adrian's website okay well thank you i think i guess thank you both uh, that's really interesting i like the idea of a carefree website uh, that's cool um the and and it's good, apparently good carefree apparently carefree yes yes so it takes yes. it takes a lot of hard work to make it look that nonchalant doesn't it, it does but the uh uh, that's a really interesting point that, that the you would immediately both of you dive to that that one zine as as the thing that you've seen and I guess that spurs me on a little bit because I don't typically share my photography I don't indulge in Instagram um uh, I do have a Flickr account but I can't remember how many years ago I last looked at it um and uh there there are uh, and I never used it particularly for curation let's say it was more for sharing than it was for curation of, of something. And I think a, a website feels like it's a bit more about curation and a bit more deliberate, as carefree as I'd like it to look. So so that, that tells me that I haven't shared enough, right? If you can only That's point to one example. That's the most recent and biggest way. point of reference yeah, for us. Yeah. Yes. That's interesting. So there should be more then, shouldn't there? There should be more points of reference. 
Hmm. 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 Interesting. Thank you both. It's good, that's go. good to have that input. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will endeavour to find a carefree way of presenting my. Uh, yeah. Or, or a deliberate can, way of presenting my photographs in a carefree fashion. <laughs> I can feel an episode coming up on the trials and tribulations of trying to get this <laughs> going. Too. It's all a journey, ah. isn't it? So yeah, absolutely. It's a journey. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a journey. And if I look through the last. 20, 25 years of, of various services and websites that are put up with, with art and with, uh, with photography-related stuff, um, it changes. It's not a one-and-done one, one thing. It will, it will get boring, and then you will want to figure something else out and try something new. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I have two websites. They're interconnected, but you know, one is more on the photographic side and one is more on the uh, generative, procedural, and AI side. Um, they both are informed by the same sensibility. But, but How um, about we, we slide seamlessly slide into our picks of the week? Because, um, Jeremiah, you have chosen as your pick a website that that bears your name it does coincidentally <laughs> such a coincidence so jeremiah uh, no chechik.com yeah tell us so, about it so again you know here you land on the page and it gives you automatically there it, it, it presents a series of say five images that uh if it catches your eye and you want to kind of go uh, deeper it allows you that um, so it's just this is the landing page on the on the top you will see different folios or different chapters for folios each of them with their own subsets there's your credit information etc uh, contacts and the likes of that um, you know, uh, this is designed for full screen, so, uh, you know... This screen is too spread, small. Yeah, so. it's too small, but they, ah, they, yeah, there you go, know, just the a little separation. Um, but there's a, an, an example, if you look below my name, you'll see various different folios. Each of them um, have a different subject in them. And, of course, ways uh, to contact me through the website. Um, on the bottom, there's some navigational tools on the lower left that are very simple. You can ignore them or you can use them, um, you know. And uh, on the lower right, there are links to, um, you know, foundation in terms of, of um, AI work or procedural work, uh, NFT work. There's Twitter and Instagram and my IMDb if those are interested in in uh, what I have done filmically, though I you know I tend not to uh, conflate them. It's just you know they're they're separate. Uh, if you uh, if you click on the procedural end, which is uh, procedural and AI, it takes you to my other site, website, yes, um, which has a completely um, sa same effective. Uh, elements, but they're arranged very differently. The idea is a little bit different, and and these are um, looks like from from the icon iconography. It's the same kind of tech framework under it. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, it's a way of presenting. You can do a deep dive into these and spend <laughs> basically an afternoon studying these images and looking at these images and 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 assessing their um, you know, their value to you, uh, or um, you can just stay in one folio or just experience the landing page. But, the, you know, the, they're designed for a very um, immersive experience in my own work. That's what they're designed to do. Interesting. Right. Thank you. So I have also chosen my own website for today <laughs> because this because is good, that's okay because the approach the approach is, is a different one it's also about how i present my photography and i've i've again i've gone over the years through so many iterations and i'm at the point right now where i'd say i want this to be as completely form follows function very um inobtrusive very simple so in the website you have a references you have photography so photography is a part of what i do um 
and no frills, no, not a lot of decoration on the website, as simple as that. No color, pretty much. It's just uh, photos on, uh, on a white web page, and you can enlarge them. There's a bit of um, chrome around it in terms of like the image number. There's little arrows to, um, to let you click through the pictures. There's a list of thumbnails. So simple navigation. Um, nice on the eye, but and very inobtrusive. Works mobile as well. Um, but photography is not front and center. It's more like, okay, the, the reason being, there are like 12 different things I do. And I always, uh, I try to separate them. And then at one point I went, no, I really should, because it's me. So I really should mm. have them available in some <laughs> fashion um, you know, and, and findable you know you know you know Chris I, I, I uh, in the kind of undercarriage of, of the website I have uh, just a complete litany of, of directing work with reels and samples and, and whatnot I just found it was just too overwhelming um, to yeah, deal with. I know I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm really of two minds here because on the one hand it's like okay um maybe maybe i just i don't know maybe i just my my imdb entry isn't big enough for that you know <laughs> <laughs> i just have so, a little button that says imdb and you can then go into a whole other yeah. uh world yeah yeah but and this and this as as it is right now is an iteration of how I present myself and my work in the web. And in, in a year from now, there's a good chance it might look different. It might have a, a different um, curation and a different focus. Yeah. So yeah. there we go. I mean, the, the, the easiest thing, and I think Chris, you'll agree, is, is once it's there, the ease of, of kind of turning off certain collections and turning yes. on others... Uh, adding and subtracting should be very simple. And once you have that, and this was one of the biggest exercises here to really find a structure in the things I do, because, you know, everything is very chaotic in a certain respect. And then, and then uh, ordering it, curating it, and finding the structure was important. And it could come down to just the simple fact of... Uh, disabling a menu entry or putting two things into one bucket where they sure. might work together better and it might it might just be like uh, uh, molding it over over the months and the the structure i have here and the tools i use for this make it relatively easy to move things around and and restructure them so yeah i'm we also, pretty happy we with how it is right now we also haven't talked about the uh, the way to navigate to the title of your website in other words <laughs> transfer you know there's 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 some technical issues of transferring the domain that you own hopefully you own your own domain name if not you know i don't I, you know what, I don't think i do at the moment um i, well, I, do, I get on I, that the only website i have actually is nothing to do with photography it's to do with our business which is which is just the two of us emma and i so uh, and that's a you know uh, really it's more of a placeholder than it is an active thing um so if people need to look at it and find out who we are they can find out who we are um i mean i've talked a little bit recently about doing all the photography for uh, emma's new etsy store um so uh, that's that's a, a different type of photography website um but it is an interesting exercise in itself but i would yeah, register choice. register a few names uh, yeah, immediately, I think I see what you can find and and uh, i think you're lucky now because you know you're not restricted to dot com dot net dot dot mm -hmm. photography could be dot photography I mean, could be yeah, yeah. Mm. could so, you yeah that's a that's a whole other question what what yes what domain or get them all if you use. can yeah. and then you can figure it out <laughs> good point <laughs> All right, and uh, last but not least, Adrian, you you, <laughs> you put a link in here or to a Google Map. What is this? Oh, I did. This is so. So this is it goes back to the theme of of why I'm building a website actually. Um, and oh, it's, it's a photo uh, walk. Uh, being about um, you know giving myself some imperative and some motivation to get out and make more photos. So tomorrow uh, is a great example of that because tomorrow I'm meeting up with some friends on a photo walk. So my pick of the week, is, I mean, this happens to be broadly speaking the, the route that will travel around the centre of London tomorrow. 
um it, it, it'll probably be different from this and uh, there are no pub stops on this yet either which clearly is, <laughs> is is a massive great hole in the plan um but the uh the point being is that if you would uh, you know it's a great tool for photographers um to use google maps uh, uh to pop in uh a few different waypoints on a walk get it to calculate directions between the two uh, more just because it gives you a graphic you can print out and, and you can share it so if you're meeting up with some friends and they might join you at different points uh, you can actually take the uh, the url uh, and you can uh, share that with everybody and people nice. will be able to find out um, you know, what route you're taking and then yeah. if it's raining, you can just uh, go and open it up in Google Street View and then you don't even have to go in the photo walk because someone has already <laughs> taken all the, the screen, photos for you. <laughs> well, it, I mean, the other use of it, of course, that people use a lot, your Google Maps and, and Google Street View is for planning things and, and doing research ahead of going to places, um, Yeah, which, it, which is a great use of it as well. I happen to know the center of London reasonably well, so um, uh, I haven't bothered to do that. Um, oh, here's an idea for you. Go Just go it. to ChatGPT and ask them to design a one-hour photo walk through the center that, of London with the most architecturally interesting elements. <laughs> that would very likely work. Yes. <laughs> That's an interesting thought, actually. It's an interesting yeah. thought. I might Never too that. late. There you go. <laughs> and if it works really well, you can just offer that as a service using the ChatGPT API. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. Let's not <laughs> Thought we, into we, that had, we had to get in a little bit of... <laughs> The AI photo walk <laughs> designer. AI okay, with that, podcast. gentlemen, with that, I'm chewing the outro music because um, I suspect we that's have, a good thing. We have almost uh, done our usual one hour. So, yeah, but there's, there's so many more things about designing and making and playing with things to get your own photo website up. But um, I'm very glad that you're making that step and finally so. i'll believe it when i see it. <laughs> it, it, it it can be a very daunting thing to put yourself out there so um i really like that yeah well we'll see how it goes um i have at least made a start and i've started <laughs> getting some photographs all right together. we'll be back soon with more until then everyone go to thefuturephotography.com and um until then everyone take care and bye 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 the show wherever you get your other podcasts find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com